Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the finale of War Hospital. I hope you're having a great day today. There's a lot of stuff we're going to cover in this video. It's probably a little longer than usual, but we're wrapping it up today. We got five days until these just for survive, right? HQ keeps wanting a whole bunch of people. It looks like they're just going to keep wanting people. So we're going to have to address that. We have a whole lot of people that got... New patient arrived. Got nailed in the trenches, so we got a whole bunch of people wounded that are coming in from the trenches. We're going to have a lot of patients today, uh, and we're going to fix them up real nice and neat. We have some uh, level ups here that we're probably not going to do anything with because I don't really think I care to change your traits. And uh, we're probably going to send people to the trenches a lot just to make sure everything is strong. I I've already sent HQ <laughs> like, like 60 people, so I... I they can cool it, all right? They, they can have... They're, they're, we're done with that. I don't need it anymore, okay? Uh, and I'm going to have to micromanage people some more, right? And that's uh, another one of the reasons why I'm, I'm going to kind of blitz through this one. I don't want to say that I'm not having fun. I am definitely having fun. But there's a certain element to this game that is very repetitive. And that repetition is doesn't feel as rewarding over time. The scouts have a lot of stuff going on and i'd love to read all of these things i'm not sure we're going to get to it i have added though uh i might need to be coming in on a train hang on so if i look at the scout teams here go to assignment uh i have ordered i don't see where it says it oh up here order in progress order in progress i have ordered uh maximum scout teams here you have to use these uh staff points to do that but i have tons of them because i'm not using them for anything else so we're just gonna max up the scout teams so that they can go do things all right and then we're gonna send them on those journeys and, and the, those adventures there all right so interestingly enough we are strong for the next fight uh but not strong for this fight that's interesting um okay cool we're <laughs> not sure how that why that is but i don't think i've ever seen that happen before but it is what it is I am going to keep managing patients and trying to get as many things. I can only have three trauma doctors, I guess. So that's just the way it goes. And maybe I missed an opportunity to have somebody join me. And that would have been my fourth. I don't know. We have four chemicals and there's nobody here. So that's what the game tends to do. It tends to give you all one category. And I, I don't know. I feel like they should spread it out a bit more for balance. But maybe that's what they've decided to do for the, the sake of difficulty. Um, but anyway, there's some repetitive elements in this game, like managing staff and moving them around and stuff that has just like over time, you get tired of doing it. And, uh, so like I could do the eight hour shift thing, but it's not working. So like, yeah, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and add a couple more people to the casualty clearing station and we'll go eight hour shifts here and I'll, I'll mess with the shifts and stuff and get people going. And then, uh, I'll pay, I'll be right back. Okay. So both scout teams now have three scouts in them. So if we have any events, where they die hopefully they don't all die and they can continue on their mission uh so let's go into the scout tent and figure out what we want to do here so i'm thinking the friar we, we've already kind of started this thing and I, anything we've already started i definitely want to like see the end of as far as that storyline goes so with each passing day uh friar talks monastery is getting closer and closer to the front lines scouts would like to check up on the friars and persuade them to evacuate from the monastery so we'll do that, and these guys are closer, so we'll have them do it at 16 hours uh, away. Uh, then we got the uh, these areas over here. There's there's a village. There's three events, the village dilemmas. Uh, that's interesting. I'm not sure where those came from, but they are there. Uh huh. Okay. So village dilemma one. According to the third German report, a big group of men armed with rifles have been seen in different villages in the region. It could be worth investigating. Okay. 15 hours away. I'll have you guys go ahead and do that. I'm not sure about that storyline. Do we see the beginning of that? Is that is that is the beginning, maybe? Usually you start somewhere and then you have options. So I'm wondering if I'm just being given the options and maybe I miss something. Um, it's possible, but it's okay. The scouts are the scouts. It's fine. Uh, all right. So I'm at 80% morale. I keep losing morale. And I'm not entirely sure what the cause of that is. I do wish the game was a bit more clear as to why I'm, I'm losing morale. But uh, I would like to get a little more alcohol done. We definitely want to make sure that we're making rations. So let's do that. And honestly, I'm not sure we need a whole lot of chemical meds. But trauma meds are definitely something that we're using. So let's make sure we stay up on that, I guess. 
and we'll let you take a rest from there for now. Um, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with morale or anything like that for quite a while. So look at all these guys. Oh my gosh. One medical team out, one medical team in. They're on 12 hour shifts now. That's how I've decided to do it because there's just never enough of them. Uh, all right. So serious and eight. Wow. Okay. You can amputate that guy. Um, two and five. Yeah, you're good. Maybe we can get the meds reduced there. Uh, we'll amputate that guy and you're good to go. And then for this, definitely want you done. Definitely want you done. Definitely want you done. There we go. Trauma. Too many patients to count, man. <laughs> Just too many patients. It's crazy. Okay. So now I'm apparently strong for all three battles. Uh, and I have not given anyone else to the front lines. I've decided to send most people to HQ now. So that's just happening. And now it's back to good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, things are moving around with that too. Decreased cost here. Both of my surgeons, both, uh, all of my surgeons, let's switch to this view, uh, have traits that reduce the chances of complications and increase the chances of simplification. So uh, they are all doing a wonderful job on that let's do it let's do 12 hour shifts for these guys i'm tired of managing them uh we'll do that yeah we'll just have this be uh if we need more rations we'll buy them from the train that's fine and then uh i think i'll go ahead and take and give you guys a rest we're gonna go 12 hour shifts in the pharmacy as well and pretty much anybody who is see this guy wants the eight hour shift system well sucks to be you man i'm good on morale again so yeah we're just gonna let that go so I can't really tell how strong I'm going to be. The, the fact that I'm blue on these two, but green on this one is a little weird. And then somebody's tired again. So let's just give everybody to HQ. Get as many drafts as possible. And somebody's tired. I think it's a nurse. Yeah, well, you're on eight hour shifts. So exhausted. <laughs> you're okay. Your shift is half over and you're exhausted on an eight hour shifts. See, the thing is like, right. I know I've said this like 800 times already. I'm sorry, but. You have eight hours on, 16 hours off. So you start your shift fully rested every time. That's the whole point of the eight hour shift. So if you're exhausted to the point of collapse after your shift and need 24 hours of rest after that, not my fault, <laughs> not my fault. You just have a personality trait that makes you more tired. Maybe that's what it is. Honestly, it could be, it could be that it could be a personality trait. What is this? Madeline Lott. Let's take a look. Madeline Lott. Madeline Lott right here. She has no negative effects on her at all. In fact, uh, she has friendly, so she's making everyone else work uh, tire less. And uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with her. So uh, no negative traits, though, making her more tired is what I'm getting at. So she doesn't have something like this where it's like tires faster. She doesn't have that. Olivia Phillips has that. So I don't know. Uh, another person said in the comments before I said, uh, you know, if, if it's because she's working solo, that's makes her more tired, right? Because if you're working alone on a shift, then that's, it's harder work, right? So in that capacity, these two are on shift two, this person's on shift three, uh, and has traits that make her tire slower. And then, uh, this person is only, uh, is the only person on her shift, right? And so she is getting more tired because of that. That was the... That was the logic in that. I love that logic. I think that's a great thing to think about. Um, I just wish they would give me more nurses so I could occupy more slots because that'd be great. What I could do is take somebody who doesn't have a preference, like uh, uh, probably somebody who would be good in that position though. I don't know who it would be. Let's say take Rosie here, for example. We bring Rosie in here to help out in here and give her a second person and now she won't get as tired, right? These guys are on 12 hour shifts anyway. And so they're working with a partner that should be a little bit better, right? So yeah, under that logic, we should see Lottie Roth getting quite, uh, quite tired because she's alone in the, the clearing station, right? So we'll, we'll take a look at that. It's, it's, you're, you're probably right. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying you have 16 hours of rest for eight hours on me. It's a really intense eight hours, I guess, you know, it's, it makes sense. I guess it's fine. Uh, we'll do this and then you guys are on. I could also have like the meds and stuff. We could have them work the same shift and then that way they're working together. So they're not as tired. Right. So we could have like, say these meds being made shift one, these shift, these ones being made shift two. And then there's two in each of these. 
these guys share a shift that's fine and then there's this so maybe we can make the alcohol all in one shift too all right just to kind of give them i don't know less workload in that capacity i don't know man ccs is actually getting pretty full we're over 31 people in there right now lots of simplifications hitting so I mean, we're getting you know shorter rehab times in slightly increased cost of materials but uh we're getting a lot of positive effects uh coming from that and uh yeah there's a there's a lot of patients there's our all of our surgical ward patients here trauma ward's still really busy and we actually had quite a few uh chemicals just come in uh from that little wave there but uh for the most part you know we're just kind of keeping things uh same old same old through this yep and uh but we have a lot of meds we're using now so we're gonna have to keep up with medicine production again because uh it is uh it's getting crazy <laughs> it's getting one could say it's even getting traumatic in a way uh there's a lot of stuff going on there however if we take a look at our advanced dressing station there's only five additional wounded now and nobody else in the trenches so ads has done its job bringing everybody in here pretty well and now it's just a matter of getting everybody operated on uh, as it goes i'm gonna let it run for a little while longer until we get to the like where the scout missions are and then i can give you a recap on how all the patients and stuff have done we're at 94 uh, percent morale and we're gonna keep cranking out uh resources here but i have people on shifts so i don't have to manage them as, mu as much we do have five surgical supplies coming in on the next train i am gonna use all the drafts we have to just buy a bunch more so we have them and uh we can get a little more alcohol or more rations and stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna use these drafts because i have no other usage for them and so that can go towards keeping our supply up and letting my people have a little bit of a breather so yeah the scout teams are still uh you know another 40 percent of their trip left to go so i'll bring you guys back in when we're closer to that all right so village dilemma one reaching the village the scout team finds only empty streets and abandoned houses the villagers must have been evacuated in a hurry and most of the houses were left open and there were multiple packages left just outside the houses it is doubtful that they will find a living soul here so we can search the houses to see if we see any stuff or we can leave the village and uh yeah we search the houses it's fine i guess uh the search besides supplies yielded tracks leading from the houses to the fields outside the village they look relatively fresh and were probably made after the area was evacuated someone had searched these houses probably looking for supplies Scouts wanted to follow the tracks, but they quickly vanished in the fields. So scout team salvages 80 rations, 20 alcohol, a thousand freight, and HQ will provide eight drafts for finishing the mission. All right, there we go. So finish that mission. Uh, we got eight additional drafts for that. And now we can go to village dilemma two. I assume there's a two. Yeah, right here. Big group of men armed with rifles have been seen in different villages in the region. That's what we're going to do. 19 hours. Wait a minute. You were right here. There's no way it takes 19 hours to go there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I was like, hold on a second. Where's my other scout team? Uh, they're waiting for me to exit the menu so they can pop up again. Okay. Friar Tuck. The monastery is filled with refugees. It seems the friars took in all who asked for shelter. The conversation with Friar Tuck was not easy. The friars don't want to leave the monastery, which has been their home for many years. They are not prepared to leave the refugees either. Friar Tuck is adamant that even if the friars were to leave, they would take the refugees with them as they feel obligated to protect them. Besides, they are not equipped to evacuate and do not have any rations to survive the journey. The scout commander knows that many of the refugees were probably too weak or old to make a long journey, and that's why they stayed in the monastery. So they could take them to our hospital, takes in 20 civilians, morale goes up. We can supply them with rations and force them to evacuate morale will still go up and we'll lose 40 rations or we leave him into his stubbornness taking <laughs> taking the last delivery scout team will acquire 10 alcohol uh per so i'll get 30 alcohol for this um morale will drop this is not the humane thing to do i mean i'm just gonna take him to the hospital we're, we're pretty good uh i could use the morale bump I i'm fine with it let's just take him to the hospital uh the refugees and friars are, su are surprised at first but agree to the scout's offer when the group departs, some of them approach the commander. They want to repay the scout's kindness and offer them what remains of their possessions. It looks like all gifts combined may actually be helpful for the hospital. So we're going, they're donating 2,500 freight, which is way over what I can even afford anyway. I'm going to cap out. Like I probably only have like 400 capacity left on that. Uh, and uh, also 20, 
uh, of it to the scout team in the hospital. Interesting. So, like, I'm pretty sure I can't have that many. I'm already up to 2,700 freight. Um, is there any way for me to use it faster? I guess I could just do this. If I do this for a bit, it'll certainly use a whole bunch of it. And then by the time the scouts get back, they can give me all that freight. Is that how that works? We'll just do as much as we can. Everyone goes 24 hours. All the engineers will just work right now. And then we'll see if that does anything for us. Uh, we have one, one team is waiting for orders. These guys are on the way to the hospital. So when they arrive, that's when I'll get the stuff, I think. So let's just use as much of that as we can right now. And we already have morale at 99%. So like, again, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it looks to me like I have a whole lot of stuff here to do. Uh, so we're strong, 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 strong. Everything's blue across the board, supposedly. So, I mean, it's, I, I don't know what's going to happen with these fights, but it seems to me like I don't really need to, to give anything to the line or anything. So I'm just going to give everything there. HQ has decided to mount a great push on the other parts of the front and effort to break the line. We were able to send them to the soldiers. That's right. We did. We sent you all the soldiers you wanted and you gave me a whole lot of drafts. And that's great. All right, cool. Uh, Anderson Taylor, engineer, let's get you... You're working on chemical stuff. Yeah, let's make you more innovative. That's fine. That's a whole lot of drafts right there, man. Uh, okay, so I think we'll go... I want to do Village Dilemma too. I just can't believe it's 19 hours to arrive there from here to here. That's crazy. It takes that much time guess but it just seems like that's a long time to go that short distance you have a dog too maybe you need more dogs i don't know does each person need a dog is that how that works yeah maybe we should uh if i go to improvements uh seems expands increase the number of scouts in the team by two number of available dogs by two that's probably what we need right here let's let's do this we'll get uh the ones working on the chemical meds we get you and, and the rations too i think we're i mean we can just buy them we're fine uh let's buy let's do that get you guys working on that uh all right so this is gonna make the eh, longer operation is okay what, what kind of patient is this again he's in the ccs uh you, this is barbos this is his regular surgical department so i'm fine with the longer operation he's he's got a lot of endurance he's fine yeah, we're just going to cap out. Morale's just going to keep getting capped out at this point. I'm not entirely sure. Like, I feel like I'm maybe stepping myself in the foot here, but like, or kicking myself in the butt, whatever it is. Um, but uh, yeah, they're just going to keep asking for it. I, I don't know. Uh, the thing is, I don't know what's going to happen with these battles, but it's really easy right now. <laughs> I guess that's where I'm going with this. I, I don't want to say it's, it's too quiet. But it's kind of what it feels like right now. It feels like, hey, wait a minute. This is this is pretty quiet. Can I save this guy? I know he's terminal, but can I just pop him in there right now and save him? I don't need to. I'll just, this, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, just do that. And uh, you just go here. That's fine. Yeah, so everything is just kind of like flowing too well, which is why, you know, this video might be a different pacing than what you're used to uh, before, because it's kind of like, you know, normally we'd go through every step and showing you every click. But every, it, it's it's not challenging at the moment. So, like, I'm hoping it, it gets there, right? So, I'll bring you back in. And, and you know, when everything, like, when anything significant happens, um, is what I was thinking here. But, you know, so far, all the all the operations are going well. Morale is pinned at the top. Uh, we have dog enhancements now, which means I could probably go in and add... I should be able to add dogs. Is it because you're... I think it's because you're not here. You're on your way to another location, so I can't add a dog. Is that what happened? I didn't assign you yet, though. I should be able to add dogs. Max dog count one. But... Oh, interesting. So I have more dogs available, but I can't assign them? Huh? Huh? Maximum number of scouts in team by two. I mean, okay. I, I don't I don't know what the the perk is there. If I have more available dogs, can't why can't I add more? Oh, it doesn't matter. I I, I guess it doesn't matter. Here we're just gonna we're just gonna send them on an assignment. Let's send them somewhere. We'll, we'll go to Village Dilemma two, even though it's nineteen hours away now. Apparently, I, 
I don't know why that's changing, but all right, we'll, we'll send them there. And, uh, I think the next time when the other team gets back, we'll send them to country road to hell. <laughs> See what that's all about. Second German report patrols are frequently ambushed on roads in the area. Could be worth investigating. See what that's all about. All right. The battle is about to begin and, uh, still pinned at 99 morale. Got uh, almost 100 surgical supplies. Uh, we're almost maxed out on our chemical supplies. Still holding firm over 200 rations, 80 alcohol, 39 drafts. In other words, I'm ready for whatever they got. Let's go. Uh, apparently, I'm not equipped for this one, but I'm strong for all four of these. I don't know what's going on. We're going to find out here in a second. I'm not going to take the, the morale bump because there's no point in doing that. And uh, the rehab center, we just keep sending them to HQ. Although, you know what? I mean, yeah, one more. Okay. Now we're strong on that one now, I guess. I'm not sure how that goes. I'm just going to keep sending them to HQ. There you go. They keep wanting them, so I'm going to keep doing that. <laughs> I guess it's fine. Boom, boom, boom. Incoming gas. The All right, give me the report for the last battle. Uh, before you do that, though, let's raise the chances for simplifications. Report. We lost ground both to the east and the west. The eastern riverbank, areas around Lockdown Campbell's Lake, and Domaine de Dorian are now in enemy hands. Our forces are spread too thin. Without reinforcements, there is just too much ground to cover. I've been sending you this a lot. This is dangerous. One successful enemy pusher will be cut off. Any orders for hospital to withdraw? No, sir. We were given a firm response to hold our ground. Well, of course. If our forces are stretched thin, the German ones are even more. They should not be able to afford more than one or two more attacks. And that's what he the says. only hope is to break through us and then shorten the line. Cutting us off is not going to accomplish that. There's little danger of being cut off, Major. Even if it is true, that only puts a bigger target on us and the 36th Lieutenant Colonel. Okay. So, got a complication here. Um, I really don't want a seven hour operation, so I'll just give you a chance for it not to heal, I guess. 51 people are in the trenches. Let's go ahead, shift my medic teams from the cemetery to ADS. Let's crank out as much as we can and get him in there. And you know what? I'm going to take all hands on deck here. We're just going to stop burying bodies for a little bit and uh, do this instead. We'll shift to 12 hour and we'll get this, get this done. Uh, nurses are fine. Engineers seem good. Uh, they're all on eight hour shifts and 12 hour shifts. Anyway, we don't need the meds. And if we do need the meds, we'll just order them, the, order them with the train, which Kind of thinking we probably should since we're about to use a bunch with 50 plus people so i'm gonna order a bunch of these let's order a few more of these i don't need the alcohol food rations are fine we're gonna be over capacity as is anyway we don't need the morale so i don't need to do heavy rations anyway let's go ahead and order uh a whole bunch more supplies because we can afford it and uh we'll just we'll just yeah we'll just get it done let's get it done so many people in ADS. Now we still have 14 bodies to bury. I guess I could put one person over there. You know, like, uh, take, uh, you, Walter. You can go over there. You can go over there and, uh, start there right now. Look, you actually don't want to work in the ADS anyway. So there you go. Uh, anyone against their preferences right now? Shift two in a two hour system. There you go. You can be in two. Uh, and then, oh, you're in two. Sorry. There you go. Two. There you go. Uh, and then that is kind of it, isn't it? Indeed it is. So I think this many people in ADS is going to be more than sufficient for what we're doing. Uh, obviously 14 bodies is a lot more than I'd like to have sitting around. 50 people in the trenches. Uh, do we want to get more ambulances? Where is it? Uh, rehabilitation. I don't need that. Uh, I'm looking for having additional ambulances i guess i have the most i can have right now right increases the number available by one and then i guess i've already done everything for this yeah 
uh do we want to do any more increase like i have i have more drafts i could do more enhancements too like i could say for example increasing decreasing difficulty by 50 percent with the fluoroscope we could try that you know this uses that freight right we got to use up the freight before they get here like they're going to be here in less than three hours and they're going to bring like 2000 freight with them so i mean i might as well use it so i think we'll do this instead let's instead of having you guys hitting rations like this let's spend the rest of these drafts on some improvements that could help i would love to decrease the time of operations in the trauma ward but i am not able to do that oh i can decrease the difficulty but all these things do are increase the time of operations they don't decrease them so it's like why do that why when i world what i want to have like the average operation time is already longer than it should be anyway increases impact of nutrition rations eh, like trucks are useless don't really care let's do this get our warehouse maxed out i think so let's pull you guys off of this and uh we'll get we'll max out our warehouse as well so that's going to use a little bit of freight we still have some more freight left to use i probably should look at that let's put you in the trenches I'll, i want to make these things all blue i don't care about hq i've sent these guys well over 100 soldiers at this point i'm not sure i'm not sure it's helping we're losing territory anyway what are you guys doing over there huh what are you doing with all these soldiers i'm sending you let's go like that 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 there you go and for here trauma ward is actually starting to thin out i like that I like to see that uh we're gonna start seeing exhausted people though let's maybe put some rest periods in here there we go that's probably a good 10 hour surgery for well, rank one you know what i mean like these are long enough operations as is yeah i'll just leave it there it's fine all right and the surgery ward all right let's have you go there you go there uh anyone who has lots of meds i want to give it to these two because there's chances of simplifications reducing the meds uh needed so if you have a lot of meds then uh, I, I, whatever it's fine i just just do it i was like do I amp amputate not amputate I, I don't care anymore just 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 do it i'll put the stable guy there and then put your rest after this and yeah, put your i'm gonna give you a rest after this yep rest after this okay sounds good all right let's see how crowded it gets in ccs now eh uh we can get rid of mean brielle greenhouse she's mean others working with them perform worse guess what she's not mean anymore this experience has humbled her she finally realizes that she's a human being like everyone else just as fragile and uh not special in any way and she's you know mommy lied to her all this time when she said that you were a special butterfly it's not true now you're just kind of like well shit i guess i guess i should probably work with these people since i'm one of them exactly see there there you go you're not so mean anymore good <laughs> i'll be right back also i just want to point out um so i added the extra person over here right for madeline lot that eight hour shift I added that extra person to her shift. So she's working with one other person now in that eight hour shift. And she's still extremely exhausted along with her partner being exhausted. It's an eight hour shift. Okay. So we'll see when it comes back around to 6 a.m. Whether they're fully rested. They should be. But the fact that they're getting extremely exhausted. Hopefully they don't collapse. Uh, her shift is about over. I, I'm, I'm bringing you in 15 minutes before her shift ends. So it should be... She should be okay like if she's just getting to extremely exhausted but she still has enough time to fully recover from that then i guess it's fine but it's it's that thing where it's like if they don't fully rest then you know maybe that's why they're getting extremely exhausted you know, just, there's probably a reason for that uh you know i don't really need i don't really need morale to fall that's okay i'm probably gonna lose some people anyway so let's just keep it pinned at 99 if we can it's fine well as expected the scout team has returned and they maxed out my freight <laughs> so uh let's go into the scout tent and send them somewhere else so uh village dilemma three or there's a dangerous forest mm. this is a yeah dangerous forest maybe i don't know i don't know which one would, would go with here this is 30 hours away though so i kind of want to send them into this one it's 25 hours away my gosh i don't know 19 hours away you know what let's do the dangerous forest i'm in let's go 
Although it makes more sense for the other team to do that since it's, you know, since they're right here. But I mean, I can always bring them back to the hospital, I guess. If that's even a thing that they do right when they're done. I don't know, but it's okay. We're getting our enhancements and stuff done too. So all of our upgrades and stuff that we worked on, improvements, I believe they're called. I got those done as well. So uh, all set. And then I guess I could add, uh, increase the number of scout teams. I guess I could have done that because it's like whatever, right? We just use the freight. And, um, yeah, let's just, just use the freight. It's fine. Just add that, uh, increase the number of scout teams and we'll go get the other one. It's fine. In the case, there's more to the in case. There's more to, to do. There's, there might be more to do. I don't know. There's still four battles left, which is kind of wild. Uh, but I believe this one would probably be the last one since it says three days. So assuming that I'm, you know, entering the eighth tier and then it'll say two days and then one day and then the 10th would probably be here. So. All right, scouts reached Village Dilemma 2. Reaching the village, the scout team find a German squad searching the village door to door. They appear to be looking for any activity that would indicate the village was visited after the evacuation. The scout commander assessed his chances. They were more or less equal in terms of firepower and numbers, but there was also an advantage of surprise that the scouts had. He could subdue the German patrol to ensure that they will not report anything. But this could prove risky. Oh, we're doing it. I got a whole bunch of people. We're doing it. The commander orders his men to take positions on the top of the last house. And from there, they had a better view of the Germans while having cover from the sturdy wall of the house. When the Germans drew closer to their positions, the scouts opened fire. There was nothing the Germans could do. Two consecutive salvos were enough to deal with the entire German squad. Understood. We're getting eight drafts for finishing that mission. Very nice. Hey, having more people in your scout team can... uh can really help out, can't it? Yeah, looks like it. Village Dilemma 3. Same thing. Uh, 13 more hours from there to there. So let's go. Uh, have them do that. Uh, and then Country Road to Hell is still not something we can do because the other scout team is still out and doing things for another 13, 13 hours. However, I believe our scout tent. Yep, we have a, a two and a half, I guess, hours in this case. Uh, one second per minute in the game, you know, relative to real time. Uh, also, we keep we, we keep losing morale. Uh, I think it's the people in the trenches. We're just not quite getting to them fast enough, and they die. So there's only 17 left. There was like 50 something, right? So there's only 17 left in there now, and I think you know some of them probably died, and uh, that's causing me to lose morale. But it, that's why I kept it pinned at 99. So I had a little bit of a you know an easier time with that. Um, let's just go ahead and put you after this guy. Eh, actually, you know what? You're higher rank. Let's have you go before you in the order here right after this guy's done resting and then we'll have you start yeah six meds let's go there we'll put you there it's fine and then on this we just keep sending to hq I, I see no reason to send them uh there is a red here right so i could just do that i guess there's a little bit of red on that side so okay i'll do that just reinforce the front lines even further i guess that's fine with me Cool. We'll just send uh, a few people there to reinforce that. So far, anyway, HQ has not asked me again to send them another 24. I had to do that five times. I sent them 24 people. So well over 100 soldiers. Uh, that's just... I mean, I was going to send them to HQ anyway. I wanted the drafts, so I guess it's fine. And we'll decrease the cost on that one. Okay. So yeah, resource-wise, we're still really solid, really firm. And uh, it's looking to me like we don't have that many bodies to bury either. So for my, I do have a lot of people on like really long shifts right now. So I am doing a bit more managing here, uh, but it was worth it because, you know, I had a lot of, let's, let's get you guys rested, put you guys over here and finish that scout tent enhancement. Um, it was worth it just because like 50 plus people in the ADS, right? So I, I needed to get people uh, out of the trenches and you can see there's still a lot of glowing still a lot of people out there to to work with here a lot of injured people eight in this area ten in this area looks like another five over in this area uh, i think these are my tr troops i've sent there right i think that's the blue ones are my soldiers that i put on the front so yeah i've already sent them to the the trenches there uh lowers the chances of complications i like raising the chances of simplifications myself 
I mean, complications suck. Don't get me wrong, but I like my chances there. So maybe this is the last fight because it's got to be getting close to that three days thing. It's, I think that's probably the last one. If it isn't, like, they're getting really close together, right? All the fights are getting really close. So the only thing I can think of is, like, the Germans are moving in on our position and we're going to start getting fighting closer and closer to us as the front moves close and bees right like right on top of us right as the front gets here then fighting's gonna happen more consistently is all i can think about so uh yeah morale rises good 86 and i will keep right on going oh look they demand more support <laughs> yeah how's it working out for you hq okay so they want more that's fine i've been sending them more anyway so I'm just going to keep sending them anyway. So here, you can have this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy. I'm reinforcing a little bit uh, to get that red to be green. And now it is. So uh, I'm just going to let that go. I think I'm fine with green. If it's the last fight, you know, I'm I'm fine with green as long as we don't lose. And that's okay. So, yep, that's all that matters. I'll get the morale up here. We got it back to 99%. So all good there. Start with shorter rehabilitations now because of that. And uh, that's all there is is morale rise. So it's fine. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, now let me take a look at ADS. We have nobody left in the trenches. We managed to get everybody out of there before the next battle. Good. You yeah, still have 12 wounded, but I need people rested. So I'm letting some of my guys rest here so that we can be ready to go with ADS again. Uh, at least nobody's in the trenches. That's the important thing here, I think. And then if I can go improvements, um, I'm wondering if there is any need to increase uh i don't think emergency measures will ever be necessary for my playthrough anyway um i was looking if there's anything i could do about you know the ads and how much they deteriorate while they're up there but it looks like i've got everything i need so i've, I've got all the upgrades anyway except for this one so that seems fine uh the only thing else i could do is maybe things like this where i could do like the full body bath i guess give us options for things in the future i suppose so i'll just have people work on that but yeah so everything seems good and ready for this next fight that's going to happen here our scouts are also about to reach their objectives so we're going to have a couple of scouting missions really quick here too so this should be interesting a whole bunch of stuff about to happen anyway and we're going to keep sending people to hq because we can look at that folder just stacking right up man 80, uh, rehab center is actually, you know, it, it's nice to have all these nurses in here, right? Like I just, I just always have two nurses in here all the time for the bonus. But if we start getting really full, I'll just shift, you know, an extra couple of nurses in here, or I'll just shift this to 24 hours and have all of them work right now. And that will really speed up rehabilitations very fast. So, uh, let's give you a rest, bring you over here. And in the cemetery, right? Well, I've just been having one guy in the cemetery the whole time, or one team, and we are now ready to rock. We have no burials pending, so yeah, everything seems a-okay -okay so far. Let's get all the stable people. There you go. Uh, let's have you go there, and this is a 12-hour procedure. Wow. Okay, you're going to go here after a rest. And then we're going to have a VIP. I didn't get any notice of this. This, this is James Francis Ryan again. Private Ryan has returned. All right. We'll have to send you up that way, VIP. There you go. Uh, let's put you there, put you there, put you there, put you there. Okay. And then you'll rest before him. And, but James Ryan gets treated now. Uh, okay. I think we're ready for the push. Yeah. Let's do it. Battle time, right? Where is it? Let's go. Yell at me. Tell me that they're sending gas. Oh, okay. This is going to happen at exactly this time. Cool. Village Dilemma 3. Reaching the village, the scout team finds barricades spread across the streets uh, and between houses made from wooden boxes, barrels, and broken down carts. On top of the barricades, they see men carrying rifles. They appear to be dressed in allied uniforms, mostly British and French. The commanding officer is surprised to see the scouts, but allows them to enter the village. He explains that they were part of the evacuation forces. They were unable to evacuate the civilians in time, so they decided to stay in the village to protect it as long as they could. Hearing about the scout's mission to bring them back, the officer looks enthusiastic, but quickly tells the scout commander that they will evacuate only if they can take the villagers with them. The scout commander frowns. 
they were around 50 people in the village. Even if some of them were soldiers, leading them through a no man's land would be risky. If we agree to evacuate the soldiers and the civilians, we get plus 10 soldiers, plus 25 civilians, plus 10 wounded to treat, and HQ provides us with the drafts and rewards and all sorts of things. Uh, or we leave them and we notify HQ to send bigger forces to evacuate this village, in which case then we just get the drafts and stuff. I mean, come on, let's just let's just be the paragons, huh? 10 additional wounded. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, right, we have battles to do. <laughs> 10 additional wounded coming in. All right, right now we want to shift all of our all of our crew back over here. We have a full team in the ADS. Cemetery crew pulls over and one of you guys are going over there too. So 24 hour shifts, everyone's in ADS now to pull them out of the trenches. That's what we do. And I'm thinking pretty much everybody else, you just stick around and do what you're doing. Uh, I will say though, I think oh, I have drafts. I'll just, I'll just buy them. I think I'm going to need more meds. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of surgical stuff happening right now. So let's get some orders like this. That'll really keep me up. Yeah, that'll, that'll be good. Uh, we'll do that. Just top me off with some meds for the train. And then, uh, the nurses are super tired because that happens every time, but it does seem as though they can work their shift. They just get extremely tired, but they can work their shift. And, uh, as long as they don't collapse during their shift, I'm all right. All right, it says there's only 15 in the trenches. That's encouraging. That's excellent. Excellent news. It means that all these little battles are going to be close together, but they're going to be easy. I like it. Send it to HQ. All of them to HQ. There we go. And, uh... Oh, here we go. A dangerous forest is done. The scout team reaches the forest where the attacks on the German convoys happen. They quickly find signs of combat on the road and tracks leading deep into the woods. The scout commander orders his men to follow the tracks, but they quickly stumble upon a German patrol moving in the opposite direction. We can try to ambush them. We got a whole bunch. We got a whole bunch of people. Let's do it, scouts. You can do it. Ooh, I lost two scouts in battle. Observing the enemy squad, the commander quickly notices that some of them are wounded, and the entire squad seems tired, as if they were recently in a fight. The enemy patrol seemed rather uninterested in observing their surroundings and did not notice the scouts. When the enemy is almost within a hand's reach from their position, the scouts open fire and the Germans are surprised. Most of them are killed in the initial barrage. And then the scout commander sees a German officer pulling a grenade from his belt. Oh, come on. Come on! So it was a good, it was a good idea, but I just got unlucky because the guy had a grenade? Fine. Okay, fine. That stuff happens. I get it. Then the scout commander sees... German officer pull a grenade from his belt. Before anyone can react, he pulls the cord. The blast of the explosion. Okay, first off, there's a delay when you pull the cord on a grenade. Okay. And where's the guy? Where's the hero dude who took his helmet off? Okay. And like went to lay on the grenade, right? Like, where's that guy? Why did I lose two? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, the blast of the explosion knocks the commander down. Then there's only silence. The Germans and their officers turned into dust. Uh, and took two of the scouts with them. The commander orders his men to bury fallen scouts and then follow the tracks further into the forest. We can at least keep going because I have a full scout team here, so let's do that. A dangerous forest continues. Not long after stumbling onto the German patrol, the scout team finds what appears to be the remains of a camp. There are multiple bodies shot dead and destroyed tent and a campfire that is still warm. The fight must have happened recently. A quick search revealed that most of the bodies had some weapons with them, handguns, hunting rifles, and even German rifles. And there are also the remains of some sort of makeshift explosives and grenades in one of the tents. It seems the camp and the ambushes were the work of some kind of local French resistance. But unfortunately, the German forces were able to find them and there was no more the scouts could do for the French resistance anyway. So we're gonna get eight drafts for finishing Les Méchons. And I can go ahead and add scouts. To their team indeed i will max size is actually bigger now so i can have even more people hoo hoo good so we're gonna order a whole bunch of them because i can and that will take time but we could do it okay uh morale goes up uh morale goes down <laughs> and morale goes up <laughs> up to 88. uh let's take uh get withdrawn take that off here i like all the just getting rid of negative perks seems to be a great thing i like that a lot <laughs> 
Uh, we got some icons above here, probably because of this. Again, the, the eight hour shift is really draining for them. Collapse, close to collapse. She has over an hour and a half left in her shift. She's close to collapse. Here's what we're going to do. Take both of them out of here. Go 24 hours with these guys. Or I can't because that bug exists. Ugh. All right. Counter, countering that. Okay, here's what we do. We do this instead. Huh? Huh? How about I get Axel because she has more endurance. Axel will work now and then I'll switch her to, to two and then all three of them can work to go while these guys, you know, do their thing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I have, I, I've altered my, I, I don't usually share what my Steam reviews are, right? Like I, I review games on Steam, you know, when I, when I play them, you know, every once in a while I'll leave a review. I don't often leave negative reviews. Um, but I did initially start with a negative review here just to like, warn people that it was a bug ridden disaster of a mess of a game. Um, it's been greatly improved since, but there's still some things like that, you know, trying to drag that area. There's still some bugs out there. Um, I don't think, I, I mean, I haven't done any like reporting of, of the bugs like that right there. I haven't reported that or anything. Um, just I haven't had the time to, to work on that, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it still exists. <laughs> It's still there. I'm hoping that maybe one day this game will not have the bugs that it has and it'll actually be a really sweet game. Uh, it definitely needs more automation though. Like having to drag people in all the time is a little bit of a pain. Uh, I, I wish I could do things like, you know, prioritize highest rank and then it'll just automatically assign them and shift them into position. If I say I want to organize by rank, uh, or have multi-tiered organizations. So in other words, order organized by status first, rank second. That way, if there's a, a, a level three that's in good shape, but a level two that's like critical, then it will prioritize that first, that kind of thing. Like I wish I had that to where I didn't have to manage this part. And then they could add elements to the game, like these scouts. They could add more elements to the game that are more interesting to interact with than drag things into boxes or you know, drag, drag things onto profiles for doctors or drag files into boxes. Uh, I, I, I wish there was more to it than that. Anyway, Sir HQ requested to send food if possible. Yeah, we can do that. I don't need the staff points though. So not the right time. Bye. I'm maxed out on food. Probably should have done that. Yeah, I could just do it. <laughs> I'm maxed out on food. So why not? Let's just do it. Uh, what else? We got 96. Well, I mean, we're going to use 96 rations right now, but whatever. the staff points are maybe they're good for replacing the scouts, right? And now we're blue across the board up here. So like, I don't need to do anything with strength. I could just let it go at this point. Like, I, I, I realistically could just let it play, right? And, uh, you know, these little positive events and stuff won't happen. But as long as the morale stays above, uh, above zero, we kind of win at this point because things are somewhat automated we just we'll, we'll lose so many people here if i don't play because of how the surgery system works you know they have to be assigned manually to a different doctor so like eventually if i don't decide what to do to them then they will die but other than that you know all right probably could use some extra meds and these guys are resting they just did a shift change uh let's switch it to a 12 hour shift instead with you guys being not the active shift there we go and then we'll go back over we don't need any more alcohol what we need we actually need rations now uh that's that's fitting okay you guys are good now so we can bring you back into here and you know i think i'm gonna put you two with her so I think what I'll do here is have you guys working shift two. Uh, I don't want Madeline Lot working alone. I want these guys to have the the popular shift, if you will. So how about we go uh, three here? That way you ha you're working with three people now, okay? And then you're gonna work with one. And then I think rehab is okay now. Like pretty much we've reinforced the line. So we don't not in a hurry to send them to HQ, honestly. So I could pull Phillips and I think just Phillips is fine at this point. And then have Phillips help on shift three. So shift three will still be alone, but 
at least the other two shifts don't have to deal with that. And then we're still running really heavy in ADS. Do we need to do that anymore? Uh, I mean, yeah, there's 11 in the trenches, so I do want to get, I do want to bring them back in. So I guess, but as long as I'm sending everybody to HQ, I'm not really in a hurry for them to rehab. We got another scout team waiting for orders. Let's go ahead and go to country road to hell. 32 hours to get there. Jeez, man. So long. And you know, we don't have the people either. I'm still waiting for that train to bring in the scouts. I think that's who these guys are. Yeah, I think these guys are the scout teams to reinforce that. So like once those once those guys are here, I'll just go ahead and uh, and send that scout team, I guess. It's a shame that I can't add more dogs. There's only one dog. Like I can't have, there's two dogs in camp. I guess that's for the other two teams, I suppose is what that's for, right? So when those guys arrive, we'll have these slots filled and then I'll send this team over. All right, there we go. So now I can go to the tent and we should see now five scouts as part of this party. So we'll assign them to that. And then I don't think they're going to arrive in time. 32 hours. That's right at the end. You know, like it says two days, but that's just rounding. So it's going to be tight, but we'll hopefully we'll see the result of whatever that is. Because the, the name of it sounds interesting. So you know, it also sounds like it's appropriate to... Okay, what's going on here? Are we not medical teams? What are we doing here? You're in 12-hour shifts and you're just dogging it right now. Everyone go 24 hours real quick. Just get these ambulances taken care of and then we'll have you guys do a break. I'll manage you after this. But right now, let's get these ambulances out of here. Uh, decrease cost. Yep. Move those ambulances. Get those patients in. Nice. Real quick now. My gosh, look at all this. Decrease cost. Morale goes up. 95%. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get out of here. Yeah, you, you have to. You have to take a break now. Alright. I think we pretty much cleared all those ambulances out of the way, which is good because that should mean that there are... There's only one in the trenches, only two wounded. Yeah. All right. So I are only 10 wounded, I guess. So, I mean, we're, we're in great shape here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I'll see you guys in a second. All right. I just wanted to confirm to you through my testing that it absolutely does not matter how many people I put in here to help Madeline Lott. It doesn't matter. They will get extremely exhausted anyway, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's an eight hour shift with 16 hours of rest. They are all extremely exhausted right now, and there's still over two hours left in their shift. Let's see if they collapse. Well, they didn't collapse. They're still extremely exhausted, and uh, their shift is done. Uh, as soon as I unpause this, basically, their shift is done. So uh, they'll be on rest now, but they did get to extremely exhausted before they had to shift over. But it doesn't seem to matter. I, I gave her two extra people. She's still that way, and now they're all that way. So I, I, I don't know. I think it's just a really intense work schedule, I guess, you know? Maybe I put them on shift three, it'll be easier or something. I, it's probably not that, but I don't know how else to, to divide it up. So I'm going to stick uh, you on... Uh, I'm going to keep you on two, so you have the most rest. I'm going to put you on three. So we have two people on three, and we'll go ahead and have one of them reassigned to one once they're fully rested. Um, but... Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter, like I was saying earlier. It, it just, uh, I don't I don't see a difference in it. Um, maybe I could do, uh, I don't know. I, I guess we could just try this. This is probably good. It would help my rations the whole time. This entire time I've been running with rations, I, I could have had less rations being used if I just would have built that enhancement. So I guess I'll go ahead and do that. We were able to send them the platoon soldiers. I did send them enough because, you know, I'm sending them, I'm basically exclusively going HQ. So yeah, it's pretty easy to send them enough when you're only sending all these soldiers that direction. So, yep. Okay. Medical teams need to go back to, let's go 24 hours here to clear these ambulances. And I think we're pretty much done on the ambulances. Zero and zero and ADS now. So let's pull up, pull you guys out of here. Give you a bit of a break. Uh, we'll stick a couple of you guys over into the... Uh, cemetery here just to kind of work that out for a little bit 
and ADS doesn't really need any much help anymore. So we'll go 12 hour shifts, two people each or one person each shift. Let these guys rest for a bit. And uh, that'll be it for ADS, man, until the next battle. So, and I think this is the end because you can see there's like nothing going on here. So that's whatever that is. That is the end. I'll be right back. Yeah, well, after I send them more soldiers, <laughs> I'll be right back. Guy says, damn, I'm glad my shift is over. <laughs> this one's like my shift starts soon. I don't know how I would feel about uh, working in these conditions, man. Like, can you imagine? I mean, none of us personally know what this is like, you know? Basically, every single person. I, w I would say every single person. I at this point, I, I don't think there's a single person alive that experienced this. Not in World War One, you know? Now, World War II might have been similar, but uh, it's just it's crazy, you know, like how that goes. We can't we can't hear firsthand stories about that anymore. We have to go to like, uh, you know, the library, you know, some place where they have historical texts. You know, we can watch documentaries and hope that they're correct. That kind of thing, right? Definitely. Uh, all right. So now that I've uh, tried to make noises come out of the speakers and keep the airwaves talking instead of silence for a little while <laughs> just making stuff up as i go uh we have four people left to bury resources are a little constrained but we have lots of drafts and uh so i i can i can still order resources We're about to have another battle here so i think that's probably pretty good the fact that they want me to send all these people to hq is actually quite helpful for the sake of uh, having supplies because it means i get the drafts for them as well so I can keep ordering more supplies that way instead of having to rely on my people for them, which is pretty good, I guess. Uh, it does. It also means. To the it also means that I can. Uh... Oh, you know what I should have done before this? I should have gave my people a rest here. Hang on. So medical teams. Uh, there's a lot of people that are fairly rested here, and I think we're gonna bring them there, and there, and there. You guys can talk amongst yourselves and figure it out there's only there's four berries four bodies left to bury 365 dead wow uh it looks like there's only six in the trenches that information is available down here and this is the first time i've seen that <laughs> okay cool i guess yeah we can see all the numbers right here we don't have to unpause and look for it wow I've been going all the way up there to see how many are in the trenches the whole time. I didn't need to do that. Great. Uh, given that there's only six up there, though, I don't think there's a real reason to push a whole bunch in there. I mean, we're not getting a whole lot of damage in the trenches, which is good. We're exhausting the enemy. Uh, we're, we're holding our own here. We have, like, nothing left to do as far as surgeries right now. Most of our operations are about to end. We just finished that last batch for uh, HQ. And we're just going to keep sending them more all the time. They want more. So we send them more. And they want more again. So we send them more again. But we're going to run out of people. We're going to run out of things that we can send them here in a second. Because we're not going to have wounded to, to fix up. You know? So eight in the trenches. Let's go 24 hours. Let's get the ADS. Let's go. Let's get all this stuff done and uh, bring people in. Get them out of there so we can uh, heal them up. Put them all that way. Yeah, we're we're very strong in the, in the trenches for all these battles to come. So there's no reason to reinforce the trenches. We're fine. And now it's all about resources, which, I mean, we've got tons of freight. We have just, we're maxed out on food rations now. We've got alcohol. I'm maxed out on morale. Barely any bodies to bury. I mean, this is GG, right? We win. This is how this works, right? Let's go there, 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 hi, there. Uh, let's put you here and hope that that surgery ends in uh, resource reductions. And then we'll go here, there, and there. I guess it doesn't matter. Trauma ward's finally empty, so time to fill it back up again. <laughs> put you there, put you, you're gonna be exhausted. So we'll go there, give it a rest. Uh, put a rest after this guy and then you guys will just go after the rest periods and then we'll make sure you rest there 
Alrighty then. Well, I mean, if there's not that many in the trenches, then there's not that many to to worry about. Only four left in the trenches, so I think we're going to be fine. I'll see you guys in a second. Lots of little blips popping up here. Let's do the one that potentially reduces morale first. No, it just takes a really long time to rehab. That's fine. All right. So, yeah, if you're a little pro tip, I know it seems obvious, but there's a, you know, you can forget about it. But if you're at near max morale, always do the negative one first, right? Because it might give you an option to reduce morale, which is usually less costly for you in all the other ways. Like, for example, it would not lead to a longer operation, a longer recovery time, and lower morale, right? They don't tend to do that. So if you're really high in morale, do the negative one first so that you can lower the morale, and then you have the option to do the good ones to, to raise it back up. Uh, uh, like that one and that one. Okay, lots and lots of little things. I do wish these events were pop-up events. Uh, I, I, I know that it's kind of cool to have us have this swirl in with this boom effect and like see the different pictures and the different, uh, you know, renderings of the patients on the table. This little effect here, that's pretty cool and all, but uh, at the same time, like this one here, for example, I don't need a longer rehab. I don't need more morale. Do this one. Uh, it's one of those things where it's really cool on its on to experience, but then when you experience it hundreds of times, it's no longer that cool. Just give me, give me a window where I can just say, oh yeah, that one. Frostpunk has effects just like this, but it doesn't do it nearly as often, right? You don't have to go in and hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it all the time. That doesn't happen in Frostpunk. Where this game here, it's, it's constant and persistent and it's all the time and it's repetitive. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things where, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can show that in video over and over again. You know, I want to make it interesting. I've seen viewership on this series fall off like a cliff. So I know it's, I know you're tired of it, which is why I'm kind of rushing to finish it in this video. Uh, not that I'm having, like I said before, it's not that I'm not having fun with it. I am having fun with it, but you know, when you start seeing the fact that hardly anyone's relatively hardly anyone's watching it anymore, then, you know, it's time to move on. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to finish the end of it. Cause I know a lot of you guys have been following it along and you're enjoying it. So I want you to see the end and I want you to see all the important bits. So that's why I'm going to show you the important bits today, but this is absolutely the end of the game here. I would think so. Uh, I can't say that, right? Absolutely. The end of the game, I would think. So is it absolutely, or do you think so? <laughs> Raise it for simplification, and then this hour we're gonna see the scout team gonna ha head to Village Dilemma Three, and it looks like we're gonna be able to get the country road to hell. It's gonna be very close, right near the end of the game is basically when that happens. So it's very close. Uh, I think it looks like we're gonna be able to get it. All right, raise morale, I guess, and we'll do the rehab. All right, scouts, what do you got? Village Three, right? done what happened waiting for orders what do you mean what do you mean waiting for orders what about village three what happened to village three they're not showing me the result of that quest oh that's lame we got all the way there and i have no idea what happened i was right i was ready to go oh i ain't i got a whole bunch of people i don't haven't uh decided for them yet oh man i was hoping to see the results of that now it is what it is at the train let's uh make sure we don't run out of meds and just in case make sure we don't run out of anything here and uh rations are topped off so we're good there we'll order a little bit of alcohol just because we can and yeah that's it all right let's let it run some more you know a huge change of pace I actually started to experiment a little bit and try to play Project Hospital. So it's a very different game. Uh, much more, uh, it's very real. I, I don't know, maybe it's not realistic, but I feel like it's a lot more realistic uh, and educational than this game is. But um, yeah, I wish I could replace aggressive. That'd have been better. Uh, let's just replace the calming thing. So it's, uh, I, I feel like it's, 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 it's like a relaxing game, you know? It's something that I can play and be like, yeah, you know, I don't have to worry about anything right now. I like that. That's kind of where I've been going there. Like, I need a, a wind-down game, you know? Project Hospital. 
I don't know if anybody's ever seen that one before. It's certainly... I think it's interesting to play, but I don't know if it's interesting content. I haven't bothered to make a series on it because last time I... I, I, I streamed it once on Twitch like three years ago. Uh, and... I mean, it might have just been a, a one-off occurrence for me. But like, as a content creator, you're always looking for things that resonate with both you and your audience at the same time. And Project Hospital, when I streamed it, it was, uh, well, I don't really know how else to say it. Uh, the lowest turnout and engagement I've had in a stream at the time anyway, it was like the lowest I'd ever seen. So it just kind of turned me off to, to playing content with it or to, to playing it anymore for, for videos and streams because it was like, well, nobody's interested in this. Let's move on. Uh, but there are games that are like that. There are games that are really great to play and they're just not quite content friendly, you know? And if you can find their mix, if you can find a balance of games that are really great to play and content friendly, then you're you're in this wonderful zone where you're just you're you're I mean, as far as the career goes, as far as the job goes, you're in you're in heaven, I was gonna say. So country road to hell. Here you go. Uh searching the road in the area took time and yielded no results. Each place where an ambush of German forces occurred gave the scouts no more clues than it gave the Germans. The scout commander decided it con that, that continuing to search was pointless and gave the order to return to the hospital. Suddenly, shots were fired from the bushes down the road. The commander shouted and the entire team dropped to the ground and hid, uh, sorry, dropped to the ground to hide in a ditch at the side of the road. Controlled fire from multiple directions started raining down on the scouts' positions, but none of the scouts could see the attackers, only the muzzle flashes. The scout commander did not know whether they were being attacked by a German squad or the allied forces who mistook them for Germans. We're going to return fire and fight the ambushers, surrender to the ambushers and hope their allied forces or perform a tactical retreat. Uh, you know, just, just to do it. Just to do it. I'm going to surrender because it sounds to me like there's a chance and I, I have to know. If I form the retreat, I'll never know, right? If I fight them, I'll be like, oh shit, I killed my own people. If I surrender, all right, I lost the scouts, you know? I, I got to do it. We're going to surrender and hope they're allies. All right. Scout, com scout commander takes his white handkerchief and ties it to his rifle, waving it around. He calls for his men to cease fire. The fight stops almost immediately. Scout commander goes on the ro open road to meet the attacker's officer. A man emerged from the bushes, but not in a German uniform, but a British one. He looks surprised at the sight of the scout commander. A quick conversation revealed that the group was indeed a part of the unit that was left behind during the army's retreat. And since then, they have been ambushing German patrols and trying to survive until the British launches their next offensive. They attack the scout team, thinking that they were another German patrol. In turn, the scout commander explains the scouts were sent to look for the lost units and help them cross no man's land back to the Allied territory. <clears throat> territory. The officers seemed relieved, and he nods, ordering his men to prepare for the journey. Okay. Unit will return uh, with the scouts to the hospital. We'll get plus 10 soldiers, and uh, HQ will provide eight additional drafts. Hey, that was the right, that was the right call. How about that? I mean, uh, I figured the most I'm going to lose is my scout team. And at this point in the game, that's the last thing on the scout's map. And I don't really care. So I just kind of went with what I, yeah. I mean, I don't know what you would do in the an actual battle situation in that situation. If any of you guys are like in a command position for military or retired or something, well, let me know what you would do in that situation. At least what you think you would do. It's, it's hard to know without being in the moment, right? It's really hard to judge actions and, and decisions and stuff without being there, you know? But for those of you who had that experience, I do not. I would love to know maybe what your take on that situation is and how would you approach it? Because from, from the gameplay part of it, the worst case scenario is from surrendering is that I lose my scouts. You know? Okay, well, I order them from the train. I have 29 more <laughs> for more staff points. In they go. Right? Like, it's no big deal. But uh, I had to know. I had to know if they were friendly. Uh, all right. Characters. Trauma specialists. Let's go. Man, I would love to do this, do this faster. Yes. Faster. Faster on the trauma, for sure. You definitely want trauma stuff to go faster because they're all so long. 
I guess not all of them. These are three hours. Most of the ones I've seen, though, are eight plus hours, sometimes even as long as 12. Uh, there's no reason to do that. Put you there. Yep. There you go. Treat everyone. Okay, we're going to let it run again. These guys are going to be heading back to the hospital in a day. And they'll probably not get here before the end of the game. But hey, you know, we rescued them. It's going to be fine. There's no additional events with it. So I feel good about it. I hope you guys feel good about this too. I'm going to let it run a little bit longer past this battle. And we'll see how many wounded we get from this battle. So far, like, we're getting less than 10 each time. I guess there's still nine wounded in the trenches. What's going on here? I have all these people in ADS. How in the world are, is there still nine in the trenches? What's going on here, guys? Huh? Huh? Are you... Are you slacking off? I mean, they're, they're Oh, maybe they're all like... They're all going together, okay? They're not going in, in waves. They're all in one big lumped group. That's why. All right, that's fine. Yeah, so now there's eight in the trenches. Man, there should have been seven. Okay. The nobody's dying. That's the important bit. Now there's only one dead in there. Okay. I guess... Well, maybe there are people dying, but we're, we're burying them. I haven't really spent a lot of time looking at that interface, so I assume somebody else out there in the comment section in the world have, uh, you know, spent more time looking at that than I have, but that's okay. All right. I'll see you guys in a second when that battle's done. All right. So we just rescued everybody off a train. This train came in, uh, brought in 13 serious condition patients right before this battle. Kind of wild. Okay. We got 93 meds. I think at this point in the game, we're fine. So I'll adhere to the recommendations for the anti-amputation uh, community. <laughs> and uh, we'll just fix everybody up anyway with all the meds. And so we'll just give them all the meds. But now, right before the battle, this is happening. I need to put the series before the stable, right? And uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. So I guess we have all that happening. Set some rest periods there. Uh, chemicals will go there. And that should be it from that train. I hope anyway. Uh, and But we did manage to get everybody out of the trenches. So nobody wounded, nobody deceased, nobody in the trenches. Everything is fine. We are ready for the next battle. So long as our doctors are, you know, ready for all their surgeries that they're having to perform. We'll go ahead and do uh, that. You should be... Wait a minute. You should be... This guy said critical, didn't he? Didn't he just say critical? That's why I came back. Because he should be operating. These two should be operating. Well, I imagine they probably are. We'll just do a rest there. Yeah, they're right. They're doing the gas thing again. It's fine. All right. So how many wounded this time? I have been letting some people uh, rest so that we could stuff them all in the ADS. So here we go. Stuff them all in the ADS. Uh, there probably is somebody in here that prefer not to work in here. So I'll... Yeah, right here. So I'll put you in the cemetery instead. And everybody else is good. You're going into ADS. Okay, there you go. And honestly, we're so close to the end. Casualty clearing station, baby. Let's just go 24 hours there too. Make sure we can clear those. Uh, we'll wait on that. Wait, play that order right here. Uh, we'll wait on that just so we can start having all those guys work. There's only 10 in the trenches. So like it's less than two trips per person basically to get there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really want the longer operation. We'll use more supplies. It's fine. I have 59 of the chemical meds, so I don't, I don't imagine I'll be using more than 59 of them. Uh, okay. Extra stuff there. Good. Simplification there. Good. Seven more bodies to bury. We have everybody rocking that. I think cemeteries in 24 hours now too. Yep. With that, with so few in the trenches, I think I'm going to go down like this. Yep. And then for the nurses and stuff, operating wards and stuff, we're going to shift everybody to 24 now because I can. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Nurse is like the one station for some reason I cannot click this. It just does not work. So I, I have, I'm unable to affect the nurses at all. Like none of these shifts I can do anything about. I can move people around, but I can't change their shifts. 
that's the the bug I'm talking about. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna have to put up with that having fewer nurses, and yeah, 13 in the trenches, no big deal. So we'll get all the bodies buried. I'm sure there will be more patients coming in on the train. It looks like indeed there is. So now they're gonna hit me with all sorts of patients to worry about. Indeed. All right, so chemicals, we'll get those guys squared away. Get simplifications. Yeah, they're gonna hit me with all sorts of patients right at the very end of the game. And that's the way it should be, you know? It should be a race to the end. It should be a stressful, desperate attempt to, to, to stay alive for that little extra bit of time is what it should be. That's how I would do it. Put stable ahead of good. And everybody else here is considered good, so they will all go at the end of all these doctor schedules with no real clear reason. Yep, there we go. Perfect. We're going to use 91 meds. So throughout the course of this, 91. So we'll just make sure that we get a bunch, order them. And that should be it. And then, of course, all the simplifications will uh, make the resources even more gentle for me. At least I hope anyway. Uh, they did ask, in case you're wondering, they did ask for more people. <laughs> so I'm going to have to send them. I think the total here will be over 160 soldiers so far. It will be sent here in this chapter. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sending them all to HQ anyway. So I just keep saying, okay. And it just keeps happening. Let's get rid of the uh, negative traits. Operating ward has some people. Yeah, that's, that's to be expected. Uh, it's not a medical team, is it? No. Let's change CCS to 24 hours. And we're going to let you guys get a little bit of a rest here. Uh, cemetery will pull you out of here too. And uh, yeah, this is the end. So we'll just let it go. Have them all fixed up and ready to rock, yeah? Look at all these soldiers. Look at all these people. And we're going to help them all. We're going to save everyone, you guys. Every single one. Stable ahead of good. Stable ahead of good. Here we go. And he'll be exhausted, but we'll have the, the rest periods. Yep, yep, yep. Put you down here. There we go. Still using 93 meds. Unless we have increased costs or, you know, decreased costs. Uh, we have a VIP back. John Callahan is back in here. Great negative effect on our soldiers' morale and their will to fight if I don't send them back to the trenches. So that'll be one guy that I have to send back to the trenches. He's in good shape, though, and I won't be able to operate him on him in time before the end of the game, I don't think so. Uh, we're just going to put him in the schedule and, you know, be sure to be, you know, take a note of him and, you know, figure out which one he is and stuff when the time comes. But I'm going to do this instead, I think. And now you're all rested. That'll, that'll be fine. We'll rest right here. Uh, and then, yeah, just like more soldiers here. Put them in the schedule. There we go. There we go. Put a rest right there and call it good. All right. Let's let the time run. I think we're probably at the point of no losing. Because there's no way we can fail in this amount of time with all the positive things we got going on and all the morale and all the positive effects. And just, oh, no, no. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's It's almost nauseating having that camera have to move all that time like that. Uh, very exhausted at the end of their shift. Go figure. And uh, bodies, no bodies left to bury. Nobody left in the trenches either. Nope, nobody's in the trenches. Nobody's waiting around. We're good to go. Let's start letting people rest again. We'll go, uh, you know what? We'll do three people with eight hour shifts. How's that sound? There you go. Now you guys can have uh, a good amount of rest there for that. All right, dude, I have 43 drafts worth of soldiers sitting in this pile. <laughs> That's crazy. Germans are launching an attack. Yeah, I almost sent all of them to HQ in time, too. All right, we'll watch the last attack. Just in case there's something interesting, different. I don't know if they'll have, like, some kind of victory thing. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Wasn't sure if they would do that or not. Doesn't look like it, though. Got a promotion there. All right, we have to survive another eight. Looks like another eight hours is what it says. So fine. Yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just survive another eight hours. Uh, change nothing about you. 
Yeah, people are about to collapse. Oh, they are collapsing in their eight hour shift. You see that? They collapsed in their eight hour shift. Oh, good. I'm starting to believe there is no such thing as an eight hour shift. It's like cake. You know, you get that reference, right? I really hope you do. I'm going to put these guys in the ADS to get these 18 soldiers out of the trenches and call it a day. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. You're welcome, HQ. I sent you even more people. You are most welcome. I got 129 drafts. <laughs> That's how many I got. So I'm just going to order a whole bunch of stuff. So our meds will be completely topped off and filled in four hours, which is uh, an hour and a half before the end of the game here. So yeah. We don't really need engineers to do anything. They're going to keep it because I guess their eight-hour shifts are working really well. Better than the nurses are anyway. And, uh, yeah, but other than that, uh, you know, we don't need them to really make anything. And have decreased cost, raise morale, raise morale, do the understand, whatever. And uh, we still have 33 more drafts coming at us as well. So it's, I think that's, there's no more fighting. It doesn't look like there's any more fighting unless they're going to sprout another one on me. So maybe it's just like this is the last wave of, of people. You heal these guys and you're good. It'd be really cool to have that happen. There we go. This guy's the last guy in trauma ward. Yeah. Then surgery ward is still pretty busy, but it's okay. We're going to have a lot of... There's morale fall. Finally, something happening that drops the morale, so... I was beginning to wonder if we had like a, a morale overflow, you know, like, because I've had people die during operations like this. And it'll say slight decrease to morale, but it'll stay pinned at 99. So I was wondering, like, I wonder if that's the thing. If, uh, you know, there's actually something overflowing there and I just don't see it. Well, it's fine. Nobody's to bury. Oh, we got somebody terminal. Or critical. Is it terminal? Or, uh, I mean, he's, it says critical, so. Uh, I mean, he should be able to last enough, long enough for... Yeah, this guy right here. Look, there's no operation happening. You can do that guy first. There you go. You want to rush? You can do it after you do these guys. And we'll just do that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll put you, put you down here. Put you right here. Or here. Doesn't really matter. Put the rest right there. It's fine. At this rate, it doesn't matter. As long as I send uh, Callahan here to... The trenches everything will be fine right i think that's how it works callahan must survive i'm not i think this is a bug honestly i don't think they're gonna actually want me to send another 24 soldiers to hq when i'm less than two hours from victory right like i, I don't think that that's a thing it's supposed to be happening i don't think that i'm supposed to have to send 180 people <laughs> to hq but hey it it worked out just fine like you know we didn't have any problems on on the trenches so if it was actually killing me i suppose that would be an issue but otherwise you know it's just an event that pops up and you just deal with it every time and that's it so i think we're uh, approaching the end here a fun little game war hospital uh it needs some work it's got some uh some parts about it that's a little you know repetitive about it i think it's it's a game that has a really good premise uh tender love and care will make it uh a really great experience uh if i had to rate it like a steam review i mean i, I did change my rating i did um now that they've uh improved it with you know bug fixes and stuff that they have done i changed it to like a recommend but i made a comment about you know i would wait for like a deep sale in that sense i would wait for a big sale in order to in order to buy it because i think that that is ultimately what needs to happen in order for it to be worth the price because it's not worth the, the price they're asking for right now an armistice starts we should not expect any more german attacks for now we managed to survive Sir, dispatch from hq an armistice was signed at five o'clock this morning all hostilities are to cease on all fronts at 11 a.m today yay finally the armistice is to last till the 13th of December. Uh -huh. This could mean some respite for our hospital. A short one for now, but let's hope it will be prolonged. Yes. Maybe this could even mean the end of this great war. Let's hope so.
On November the 11th, 1918, at 11 a.m., an armistice came into effect, suspending hostilities on the Western Front. Millions of people could finally return home if they were lucky enough to still have a place they could call home. As the war ended, crowds came out into the streets, cheering for those who had returned and the peace they had longed for so much. Yet they couldn't forget those who lost their lives, soldiers and civilians alike. Over 20 million died in the conflict. We should never forget that war is not the answer. We live in a time where the task of everyone is to fight the enemy by all means possible. By not carrying out an order, you should be sentenced to expulsion from active service. Sir, I got a message from Commander of the Expeditionary Corps. Sister Janet, can you read it for us? In these dark years of fighting, we taste only defeat. The defeat is not understood as tactical or military loss, but fall of our humanity. I ask myself why. We think of ourselves as guardians of all that exists. We think that our military tradition and the wisdom of our generation give us the right to always choose the right path. But we were so wrong. I am asking this court for the acquittal of the accused Major Henry Wells, signed Douglas Haig, commander of British Expeditionary Force. Acting as chairman of this court, after considering all factors, I acquit Major Henry Wells of all charges and return him to active service. I close the court hearing. Your Honor, I have learned in my service that the greatest threat to humanity is ourselves. For me, today's sitting is proof that one man cannot stop this machine of destruction and hopelessness. I would like to inform you that after today's judgment, I will formally resign from service in His Majesty's armed forces and find a place where man and his life are still the most important because the war is and will always be lost, not just for one side or the other, but for entire generations on both. Yeah, I mean, if, if they treated me like that, I'd probably want to leave too. I feel like the, the like that trial was kind of a more abridged version, right? Like they were very, they were very strongly against him, right? And then they get this letter. Oh, I have to hold it. They get this letter, right? That says, oh, it's from, you know, from, you know, a really important guy. And he's just like, I think you should acquit him. And then everyone else just looks and goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like there was maybe a bit more back and forth in between those cuts, but Ultimately, I'm, I'm happy that they had a scene like that, too. I, I really appreciated them using, like, historical footage and stuff, too. I think that was really nice. Um, yeah, they never, never forget that war is not the answer. Uh, we keep forgetting, you know? The world continues to forget. Uh, I wish it wouldn't, but it does continue to forget. And it doesn't look like that's slowing down. Uh, well, I mean, I guess, it, I guess technically it has slowed down, sl slowed down relative to the Great Wars, right? Of course, like worldwide war is obviously that's faster paced military and destruction than we have today but conflict continues to go and it doesn't look like we're going to stop innovating new ways to kill each other sadly patient saved 466 patient deaths 139 civilians taken in 114 in chapter three so that's it war hospital I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I hope you had a wonderful time with this one. If you want to check out anything else we got going on on the channel, uh, playlist tab on the channel's got a whole bunch of stuff. I have uh, I've covered well over 100 games in my eight years doing this. Uh, a lot of that streaming though, I'll, over 200 games if you count streaming. So I have no idea how many playlists I have, but I know there's out there something out there for everyone. Uh, if you're like the grunge of this game, you know, 
I, I, I haven't I haven't gotten a completed Frostpunk playlist. Uh, I never actually completed it. Uh, it was a long, 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 long time ago. Um, but I am interested in Frostpunk too, so I might be looking at that. Uh, but if you like the grind of, of this one and you want like a more city builder kind of experience with decisions to make and things like that, uh, you can check out Surviving the Aftermath. You might like that. It's more of a post-apocalyptic thing than it is a war thing. Um, same thing with Endzone. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of stuff there. So give it a shot. See what you think. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Bye-bye.